Here we have that Palm Prix fonts, which came out a few years ago, but in a weird way, they still live on on your LG TV. Why don't we get to how that happened? Before we get to that, this actually has a screen protector, which I'm going to remove right now just to save you the agony. If it does actually come off <laughs> the way it's supposed to. Come on. Oh, it's breaking. Oh, there we go. Hi, welcome to Zigadjo Review. The Palm Pre phones came out in 2009 from the company Palm, which technically does not exist anymore. Well, it does exist in a weird way somewhere in the internet, but it's not the actual real Palm company. These devices came out in order to compete, of course, with the iPhone. Again, all the way back in 2009. On my right hand side, this one right here with the little circle there or the little ball there, it was the first generation Palm Pre. This phone was a sliding device, had a touch screen and a keyboard. So you could use the device both ways if you wanted to. Then on my other hand, I have the Palm Pre Plus, and this one came out a few months later, actually closer to 2010. And this was a GSM device that was released for AT&T. Now, if you look at both phones, not only the differences are the little pebble that you see there at the bottom, but also the color of the keyboards are different. Some orange, accents on the keyboard that I think to me make it a little nicer to look at on the spring version with those orange accents in the back. It all looks exactly the same which has this little mirror type finish in the back which I'm assuming is so when you're taking a selfie you can see your face and make sure that the picture comes out correctly since you won't be able to be seeing it in the screen on the front. Now the device has this very nice closing and opening sound and it feels good in the hand it is small in comparison with for example my pixel 6 pro which is gigantic compared to the palm pre so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick review on this devices the specs what was it that you were expecting to get when you were getting these devices, a quick history of these devices and why they are actually so important, much more important than a lot of people think, and how they ended up getting into your LG TV. These devices came out at a time where cell phone companies cared about the product that they gave you. They wanted to make sure that you felt like you were getting your money's worth. So these devices came with a ton of accessories that you will have never even thought about getting today. So why don't we take a look at what you got when you bought the Palm Pre. The USB-A charger, which has this retractable plug, USB cable, and it had a mini USB at the end. And then we have a carrying case. So this little pouch, of course, the idea was you put your phone in here to keep it protected from scratch and stuff like that when it goes into your purse or pocket. And then we have a pair of headphones because of course the device comes with a headphone jack and back then companies cared about you being able to listen to your music. We have a bunch of, of course, literature with the Palm branding everywhere. Now keep in mind these devices are used devices so they're a little scuffed up so you can see here it's a little it's broken right there in the in the corner so it's not in mint condition but it works so here we have the palm pre original and the way you can tell is the original is because it has this little ball here in the middle that function as a little button and as a way to teach people how to use the touch gestures that people weren't used to at the time because you got to remember the iPhone had recently come out and it used the middle button for all the actions. This device literally relied on you scrolling things here at the bottom. So they had this button here to kind of give you a guide if you were coming from, let's say, an iPhone. Now the original Palm Pre 
has a QWERTY keyboard here at the bottom. And this is for people who are used to a BlackBerry. Blackberries were very popular at the time. A lot of people didn't want to make the transition to a touchscreen because they were afraid of typing on a touchscreen. So this provided the QWERTY keyboard for those people who wanted to have the experience of typing on a regular keyboard. Now here inside we have the volume rocker. Here on the top we have the headphone jack. This is the power button and this is your power lock button and this uh, you will put this for the phone to go on silent here on the side we have the charging port which is covered in order to open it you have to flip slide the phone open and you pull this little tab here and this is your usb charger now there isn't a front facing camera because back then selfies weren't what they are today and what selfies have become but you did have a camera in the back with a flash and a speaker here. Now going with the times, you had a removable back, which meant that you could swap your battery. And the way you did that wasn't super smooth, but it actually got the work done. So you will press this button here like that. And then, so while you press it with one hand, you will pry that and then it's open. And it's going to make an ugly sound like you're breaking it, but that's just the way it sounds. Every time I open it, I'm like, oh, I'm breaking something. So there goes the backing. And so here we have the back of the phone, the battery with the palm branding. And then here's the tab to remove it. This is the Sprint model. And you can see me there behind the camera. The Sprint version of the phone was the original version of the phone. Now let's move on to the Palm Pre Plus was a GSM device, meaning that it was made for AT&T, as you can see there in the back. So we have Sprint and AT&T. And there's a few more differences here. Here on the device, we lose that little button here, that, or the little pebble. And this actually works the same way with the gestures here on the bottom of the screen. By then, I think they had decided, you know what? We don't need this little button. We can just make the whole experience the same. Now, another difference here on the device is the color on the keyboard. It also allows you to be able to differentiate using the shift key. So this little color key that you see here, orange and gray becomes the shift key so when you press this you'll be able to interact with the numbers or all the other symbols in the keyboard I don't know if you can see all the little symbols there on the keyboard now the devices are exactly the same size in every single way the other big difference on the AT&T version of the phone is that this actually supported a form of wireless charging so when we open the back here we have these uh, little connectors, as you can see there, and there's a little module here that connects to this part of the phone. And so, sorry, to this part right here of the phone. So the phone will technically be able to do wireless charging. And the difference also in the backing is this is a uh, rubbery plastic matte color versus this shiny hard plastic on the original Palm Pre. So that's the other difference with the AT&T version of the device. Thank you so much for watching the video so far. This is Carlos from the future. Just wanted to let you know that the video was a little delayed. And the reason was because it took me a lot longer to get the Palm Pre working. These devices are all the devices, so they were tied to the network. AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, depending on the carrier that you were using. In order to get the phone working, in order to get into the actual operating system of the device, you had to activate the phone on the network that you had gotten the phone on. There was no way to get into the Wi-Fi part of the device in order to get it working. So I couldn't get the service on the phone because the phone does not work with current networks so it took me a lot longer than i thought it would to get the phone working i was able to figure it out after long hours and days of research on how to get around that activation screen so i could show you the operating system on the device and how the phone works now if you're interested in how to do that let me know in the comment section so i can do a separate video on that because this video is already very long so if you're someone who's interested in seeing how to activate a pump pre how to get a pump pre working without having to go through the whole network thing let me know in the comment section now let's get back to the video so let's start with the availability of the Palm Pre. The Palm Pre came out in June 2009, and this was 
a direct response and competition with the iPhone that had come out in 2007 with the T-Mobile G1, otherwise known as the first Android phone that had came out in 2008. And then of course, Palm. Now we're also talking about the time where we had carrier exclusive devices. The iPhone was exclusive to AT&T. If you wanted to get an iPhone, you had to get service with AT&T and you had to sign a two year contract. Same thing with T-Mobile and the first Android device. So Sprint followed suit and the Palm Pre became an exclusive device, but Verizon went and spoiled the exclusive party by announcing a mere eight days after the device had launched on Sprint that it was going to be coming to Verizon six months later. The Palm Pre was a hit for Sprint, not in the market as a whole. If we compare sales numbers for the first iPhone, the first Android and the Palm Pre, well, we will notice that the Palm Pre really didn't set the world on fire. It was rumored that the Palm Pre had sold between 50,000 units to 150,000 units in the first week, but that's comparing it to the iPhone, which sold over 270,000 units on its first 24 hours or 30 some hours, whichever way they pretty much doubled the amount of sales of the Palm Pre with the iPhone. And the first Android sold a million units in the first six months. Now let's talk specs. The Palm Pre was a 3.1 inch device, which made it the smallest out of the T-Mobile G1, again, the Android phone and the iPhone. It carried a three megapixel camera in the back, as you've seen, a single camera device. That might sound like not much, but keep in mind that the T-Mobile G1 had a three megapixel camera. iPhone also had a three megapixel camera. The Palm Pre came with a stunning fast 256 megabytes of RAM. That's right, 256 megabytes of RAM and a 1,150 milliamp hour battery. Comparing it to the G1, which had 192 megabytes of RAM and 1,150 milliamp hour battery. While the iPhone also had 256 megabytes RAM, but it beat it on the battery department. It had 1,400 milliamp hour battery. Now, all three devices had a 320 by 480 pixel screen. The iPhone and the G1 both carry Gordon Gorilla glass, while the Palm Pre had a plastic screen. But why do I hold the Palm Pre in such an important place? Well, the reason is because to me, this was the first and only phone that has actually come close to being a competitor in the cell phone market despite the lackluster sales. And the reason is because WebOS, which was the operating system for the Palm Pre, was unlike anything else that was in existence. It will take over a decade for Android and iPhone to have some of the features that WebOS had. Some of those are gesture controls. Nowadays, on your Android, you can actually just use your finger. No longer the arrow is needed or anything like that. You just swipe on the screen up and down, side to side, and the phone will react. Same thing with the iPhone. Well, I would like to tell you that all the way back in 2009, the Palm Pre was the first device to do that. All right, so here we have that Palm Pre all ready to go. So there's two ways to turn it on. One, you can press the power button here, which gives you the lock screens and you will just swipe up and it gets into the phone. Or you could just flip it open and it's on and then you can close it again to get rid of the keyboard. Now, here is where the magic happens, okay? The operating system to me is the most important thing about this device and that is WebOS. So, this uses what they used to call or what they call the card system, which means that you can open a bunch of different apps and have them running in the background. So here I'm going to have contacts, which of course I don't have any. I'm going to open my dialer. It's going to go there. And as you can see, the next the app moves to the left to make room for the next app. And they keep going like that. So you can go and open a bunch of different apps 
to do that. So here, this is the app drawer. The little arrow there opens the app drawer. I can go to messages, which of course I don't have any way to do messages because I can connect. Then we can go to the internet there, which I've actually tried to connect to things, but you can't. So here we have some preloaded bookmark websites. So we can go Amazon, for example, try to connect to Amazon. Right now I'm on Wi-Fi. So it should technically connect, but the reality is that it isn't going to work. It's just going to stay loading like that forever. I've tried different ways to do it and it just doesn't work. The only one that I was able to make work, which we can go and do, oh, hold on. Uh, okay. So here, you go here, see new card, you click new card, and that is going to open a new web browser. And here we can go to ESPN. And ESPN is actually going to give us the game scores. At least that's what I was able to get when I did my testing yesterday. Whichever way, this takes forever to load any pages. So I'm not going to keep you here staring at a blank page. We're going to move forward. So I go up. And as you can see, everything that I've been using is right here waiting for me ready to use. And all I have to do is go back and click on what I want to go. And it's going to take me there. Now, if you don't want to get out of the car system immediately, all you have to do is press up and hold. And it's going to open your menu right here with the main apps. So if I wanted to go straight to making a call, I will go here and I will hold with on the phone. And then when it's white, it's going to open that dialer. And why isn't it doing it? There we go. There we go. So there's a dialer. And of course, then you will go ahead and, you know, make a phone call. And so here we go. And there is there. Now to close apps, all you do is push up, push up, push up, and you're closing things. Now I can go here and this device had the yellow pages, which technically was a search system. It will literally allow you to search places this even back then will ask you back all the way into 2009 will actually ask for your authorization to use gps the gps isn't going to work when it's still going to say allow and this is going to try to figure out where i am but it's not going to actually do anything this is going to stay there so if i go again let's go to oh like, look at this we have uh AT&T navigation, which is not going to work. Yes, back in the day, each cell phone company had their own GPS surveys before Google Maps became the standard for everybody. But Google Maps is actually available here as well. If we go to the right, there is Google Maps. We can go to Google Maps. And I mean, it isn't going to open, but, you know, it's just the idea that you were able to use Google Maps. Now let's go to uh, YouTube. YouTube here isn't going, it's going to open, but it isn't gonna take us anywhere. So it's gonna stay like that. It's kind of sad that you cannot um, go anywhere or see anything here, no matter what you search. So like if I search here for, uh, oh, there's no keyboard. So you gotta open the keyboard. So let's go to Zgad. Jet review. Oh, did I? I got this. I got. Oh yeah, I got it. Already. So you will go here. Make sure you subscribe to Zigaju Review if you haven't yet. So I press Enter, right there. Enter, and it isn't going to go anywhere. It's just going to stay there. So that's the only problem that you can get this working but you're never you're not going to really be able to do much there are ways to jailbreak it and to add things into it but that's something that um again if you want to see me do that I, I can do that i will do a separate video for now this is the palm store here's where you will go and find your palm apps of course there's no store anymore so that's gone but this is what i loved about this device how intuitive and easy it was to use as you can see everything i've done is one-handed even when i open the, the the keyboard i can type with one finger i don't need to use a second finger for anything and then when i want to close something i just gotta swipe it up get it get rid of it so here opens up closes opens up closes that's another way to open your app drawer if you don't want to click on the little key there you have all these touch gestures and no other device had when this device existed a way to go back is literally you just press the back button here like that swipe back and it takes you back so let's go to let's go here so i have the gadget review there right 
So I press back and it's going to take me to the main page. I'm going to go back and it's going to technically close the app, which means that it brings me to my card system so I can move to the next one. Now for network and stuff, you just swipe down here and there it's going to give me my Wi-Fi. It's going to give me the date battery status, Bluetooth, and if I want to turn airplane mode. Now, another way to turn on airplane mode is a little switch right here on the top of the device. Uh, there it goes. So when I move the switch, you're going to see here what's going to happen. Okay, so you move the switch and everything just got silent. So that was a way for you to go into silent mode really fast, like if you were in a movie theater, you were in a meeting or something, you wanted to quickly turn the volume down on your device, you just move the little switch right there. So we're back to volume. Now, the other thing, as you've noticed, is every time you come back to the device, the device is where you left it. So if you left it like this, this is where it's gonna be. So if you had the phone app open and you went and put the phone away in your pocket, then when you came back and you turned it on, the dialer will be right there. So everything that you were doing will be waiting for you right there. All right, lastly, let's do an outside environment. So I'm out in the street, walking to the car, cars, uh, birds and stuff. Again, no way to know what I'm filming or you know, if this is looking good or not. Again, we'll see. Something that's really cool that you can do here is you can edit on the fly. So I'm gonna put this video here and I'm going to press right here and uh, there and so it's going to take me to my time there at the bottom and so all i have to do is drag here to do a quick edit so if i want to get rid of the beginning the very beginning when i'm flipping the camera around before i start talking and then when i'm done talking and i'm putting the camera away I can go ahead and cut that off. So I'm gonna do this really slowly to get it right. And same here. And so technically, so I can start it right there. And so I'm gonna save it. And now I just edited a video before I have to post it. To me, the operating system on this device is the best operating system that I've ever had the pleasure of using. I would like to stress this. All the way back in 2009, the Palm Pre was doing this with WebOS. And the concept was really simple, logic and intuitive. Very simple, clean and easy to use. But yes, a phone without apps it's a phone that no one's going to use. And that was one of the biggest issues for Palm. They did not have a marketplace like Android and Apple. They didn't have companies trying to make apps for their phones. And so that hurt the sales of the device. Another thing that hurt the sales of the device was the way the phone was marketing. My phone can read my mind. At first, it kind of freaked me out. My phone was doing what I hoped it would do before I even thought to ask it to. My phone can read my mind, I'd announced strangers in line. Does it know you're crazy? Well, of course it does, sir. It's mine. That made absolutely no sense. They didn't tell you anything about the phone. They just failed in their marketing department. And marketing means a lot. The other problem is that they decided to, in my opinion, stretch too thin. Instead of sticking with one device, like the Palm Pre or the Palm Pre Plus, which came out mere months after the Palm Pre, they started launching a bunch of other Palm themed devices that kind of took the Palm Pre form factor and changed it a little bit. Starting with the Palm Pixie. Yes, the Palm Pixie. The Palm Pixie pretty much took the form factor of the Blackberry. It was also 
smaller than the Palm Pre. The Palm Pixie was 2.63 inches tall. It just had a touch screen at the top with a keyboard at the bottom. Then we had the Palm Pre Plus, which came out in May 2010. And as you can see, it's not that much different than the original Palm Pre, except for the things that I have pointed out before. Then we had the Palm Pixie Plus, which really didn't offer that much of a difference versus the prior device, device which was the Palm Pixie. And eventually we got the Palm Pre 2. Now the Palm Pre 2 actually had big changes. One of the big changes is that it lost that pebble-like design of the original Palm Pre. So now it had a flat screen surrounded by a plastic frame. The other thing is that they actually included Gorilla Glass for the first time. No longer did you have to worry about a plastic screen. They had an improved camera, storage, they got rid of the little charging door that you find on the side of the Palm Pre previous devices. My thinking is they tried too much too fast. I feel like they should have focused 100% on the Palm Pre, getting a good launch, getting a good foothold in the market before straying away to other devices that no one was asking for. No one was asking for a BlackBerry imitator. BlackBerry did great at what BlackBerry did. And they went to their graves doing what they did great. By 2010, it was obvious that the Palm Pre wasn't doing that great. Here we have a chart, thanks to Business Insider. You can see here the number of apps on each company. We have Apple with a gigantic amount of apps, followed by Android, followed by BlackBerry, followed by Palm. Now, back then, in 2009, 2010, hell, all the way back to 2007 and 8, the apps were something that was brand new for smartphones. And it had actually been introduced by Apple, which is why Apple had a grab on the market when it came to apps and what apps were on which devices. Of course, that later changed when Android became a bigger brand around the world. But the fact that the Palm Pre and BlackBerry didn't really have apps for their devices, of course, it hurt their sales. In April 2010, it was announced that HP was going to acquire Palm and all their software and hardware. This is a mere 10 months from when the Palm Pre was released. Remember, the Palm Pre came out in June 2009. By April 2010, Pawn was owned by HP. But as I stated earlier, the moneymaker there wasn't really the Palm Pre. It was WebOS. WebOS was something that HP was planning on putting on all of their devices across the board. Yes, HP had gotten into the mobile market by buying Palm's business. So they were going to lead with those devices. They were going to add WebOS to all of their printers. They also tried to launch a tablet that had WebOS in order to compete with the iPad. Well, that didn't really work. Oh, and you could also look forward to having WebOS on your laptops. Yes, that's how committed HP was on WebOS. Then HP went ahead and announced the HP Veer 4G. This was to be a smaller Palm Pre device that really didn't make sense. The device was tiny. It stood at a tall 2.6 inches. Can you imagine a 2.6 inch phone? A 2.6 inch phone is smaller than this phone. Look at what this phone looks like in my hand. Imagine losing 0.5 inches out of this. Not very useful. The Veer also lacked a headphone jack. Back when headphone jacks were on every single device and when Bluetooth headphones were not really a thing. This also, I will say, was probably one of the first devices that tried to sell you or ship you a dongle in order to be able to listen to music. You will have to have this magnetic contraption that will attach to the device in order to be able to plug your headphones, kind of defeating the purpose of buying a small phone. By August 2011, HP announced that they were exiting the market when it came to mobile hardware. And that is 
a little bit over a year after purchasing Palm for $1.2 billion. Of course, that Palm brand hadn't needed the gains that HP was expecting. And I wouldn't blame Palm 100% for that. I will blame most of that on HP because they made some really boneheaded decisions with the Palm branding and the devices. Hello, uh, the Veer will be one of those things. In 2013, it was announced that LG was going to be purchasing WebOS from Palm. A lot of people were actually excited when they first heard this because knowing that LG was in the mobile market, a lot of people were hoping that LG would go into the phone market with WebOS. They didn't though. They later announced that they were actually going to use the software for their smart TV platform. And a lot of people were thinking about how was that going to work? How is that going to look? How are you going to repurpose a mobile operating system for a smart TV platform? Will we go back to the card system? How is this going to look? Well, if you own an LG TV today, most likely you're using WebOS, which comes all the way from 2009 in a little device like this. And I will say that WebOS on LG's TVs is the best operating system for a smart TV. And we are coming kind of full circle in this whole WebOS story or history and the Palm Pre existence. That is the history of the Palm Pre and more than anything, WebOS. Who would have thought back in 2009 that WebOS was going to have the longevity that it has had? Let me ask you, have you ever had a Palm Pre? If you did, what did you think about it? Would you be interested on a device this small that has a sliding mechanism? And more important, do you enjoy your LG TV powered by WebOS, which I bet you probably didn't know that come, came from this little device. If you have any other questions or any other comments, let me know in the comments section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. Thank you very much for watching.